Hi everyone, I'm Rob, the Country Traveller. This is the third in the series of videos. In part one, we walked from Studland along the first part of the southwest coastal path up to Old Harry Rocks, which mark the start of the Jurassic Coast, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In the second part, we looked at Old Harry Rocks and the limestone cliffs. In this third part, we're going to walk from here up Ballard Down to the Obelisk and take in the view along the way. We'll take a last look at Old Harry and then walk up to the next promontory. The promontory that we can see here now was where I was standing when I filmed the previous clip of Old Harry. So we'll set off on our walk up Ballard Down. Edith is on the lead now, as you can see, in case she decides that something smells nice on the edge of the cliff and she falls over. This is the view out over the English Channel. It's about 10 o'clock now and a lovely July day. If you've watched the previous video, you'll have seen the Ballard Down Fault in the cliffs. We're now over that, but of course we can't see it from up here. For those of you that haven't seen it previously, the Ballard Down Fault is thought to have been created about 20 million years ago as the geological movements pushed up the layers of rock from below. Morning. There are some cyclists coming up behind us now. Oh, there they are. This is still the southwest coastal path that we're following. We're not going to walk to the end today though. That's about 629 miles further on. We're taking the right hand path through the gate, following the cyclists. You can see the cyclists in the distance. I'm very impressed that they're still on their bikes as this hill is really steep now. It may not look it, but I can promise you it is. Even he this puffing. This is the view to our right now. You can see Pool Harbour and Studland Bay. It's a lovely clear day and we can see for miles. Studland Village, where we started our walk, is in the middle of the screen now, hidden by the trees. Here's some sheep on our right, proper hillside animals, perfectly suited to living up here in all weathers. Here we are at a trig point. These were originally used to map the country accurately, but they've been largely superseded now by aerial photography and GPS.
We'll walk over now to our left hand side to see the view of Swanage, which is my hometown, but I haven't lived there for many years. A lovely place to grow up in, but not much work when you're older. As we get higher up, we can see the view on both sides of the hill now. It's not as steep now and either is livened up again. We're on the right track, that's a bonus. We're still climbing as you can see here. We're nearly at the highest point now though, I hope. We're pretty much at the highest point now, so while Karen and Edith have a rest, let's have a look at the view. There's Swanage with the bay in front. You can just see the pier in the distance. The land that you can see in the distance now is the Isle of Wight. That's Christchurch and Bournemouth with Studland Bay in front. You can see Studland Beach, one of the best sandy beaches in the UK. Now we can see Pool Harbour, which is the second largest natural harbour in the world, after Sydney. You can see that we're walking on flatter ground now, Still going up, but not very steep. We've come through a gate and onto a track. The end is in sight. That's the obelisk in the distance. It's actually downhill now. There's a great view here of the rolling Purbeck Hills. The yellow flowers that are coming up on our right are ragwort. They're actually poisonous to animals. It affects their livers and they can die if they eat too much of it.
Not much further. And here we are. In the middle of nowhere, we find an obelisk. So why is it here? The obelisk was originally erected in 1892 and commemorates the provision of a new supply of drinking water for Swanage. So now you know. As you can see on the plaque, the obelisk was dismantled during World War II because enemy bombers were using it as a marker point on the way to drop their bombs on the cities in the Midlands. It was re-erected in 1973 And that's the end of this part of our walk. But before we go, let's have another look at that wonderful view.